The Houston Texans have hired Lovey Smith. He was the associate head coach and the defensive coordinator under David Culley. You know, former NFL head guy. uh, Coached the Bears to the Super Bowl back in like 2006. Uh, Most recently was fired as the Illinois head coach in college football. It appears from reports they wanted Josh McCown. That was kind of frowned upon. He has never been a head coach, uh, has only uh, really played. Like most of his stuff, he's played. never been a coach. Yeah, he's never been Period. a coach. Yeah, uh, some of the guys that are involved there wanted Flores, but obviously, with all the stuff going on there, that becomes a bit of an issue. So, Levy Smith was the compromise hire from from what I can gather. This is interesting. Uh, if if I gave you an over under on how many years Levy Smith would be the head coach for the Houston Texans, if I set it at one and a half. Would you take the over under? How many wins? No, 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 not how many wins. How many years he will be the head oh. coach? Oh, One and years? A half. Yeah, under, under. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of. I mean, they just fired well, one hang guy. On now. That's a that, less like, than two. Let's say that because he might complete two full seasons. They might not fire him in the middle of the season, but he's he's not he's not getting a third year. Yeah, I I don't think that I don't think he gets uh, a third year. I don't I don't know that he gets a second year. But obviously, we'll see what happens in the first one. I mean, you never know what could end up happening. But this was uh, this I'm was shocked a strange that hire. he took the job after they fired McCall. Yeah, I, well, I don't know that he was super tied to David Cully, right? Like I I think if you get an opportunity to be a head coach in the National Football League again. You know, like this, it, Lovey Smith looked like he was going to go kind of the same way that Steve Wilkes did, right? Uh, now, obviously, Lovey Smith had significantly more success, but that success was 15 years ago. So, I, you know, I don't know that he was tied at the hip to David Culley to a point where, you know, he wouldn't take the job. Like, I, I, think, I think he almost, I, he, I'm not going to say he had to take the job, but I don't know how many more phone calls he was getting. Well, I don't think he was getting any more phone calls. But you know, this is this shocks me. This just shocks me. I mean, it's it's strange. Like everybody kind of knew what the situation was at Houston when Lovey was hired as the defense coordinator, right? Lovey was going to be the guy that was kind of the right hand man. He had been a head coach in the league. It's always nice to have those guys on your staff. It's it's strange. It is certainly strange that this is the direction that they went with all the different options that they had out there. Um, are you are you shocked that Eric Bieniemy is not like he still is not getting any of these jobs? Like there's been so much hype around him, and it just it feels like all of this is maybe just media stuff. It, it, maybe he doesn't interview well. We have a problem in the league with. Black coach is not getting a fair shake. That's undoubtable. Undisputed, you can't argue that. Right. Eric Bieniemy individually, for some reason, everyone just assumes he's the best guy for all of these jobs. I don't know that I agree with that. And I just don't know why everyone's sold on this one guy. Like, fixing a systematic problem is not getting this one guy a promotion. That's, that's not how any of this shit works. Okay. Yeah. I, it it could just be that. Listen, he is the offensive coordinator under one of the greatest play callers in the history of football. Okay. We just had Mac Nagy be a huge embarrassing failure. All right. True. Like, why are we hiring Andy Reid's coordinators when none of them have done well? Like, at some point in time, you just I get why people don't do that. I also get that you get to play call, call plays for, for Patrick Mahomes. We ain't got Patrick Mahomes. All right? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. You're 100% right. So, so like, like I, you know, I don't, I don't care if the enemy gets a job. That's an individual. That's a person. You know? Like, I think we have a problem in the NFL. I don't think getting the enemy hired fixes that problem. Okay? 
Well, agreed. And I, so I wasn't bringing up so much the problem. I was bringing up the fact that Eric Bieniemy has been talked about for multiple cycles. But I don't know why he keeps getting talked about for everything. Because that's, I just that was don't... my point. Like, he, right, look at their like offense this year. They went through a couple of games and a couple of weeks where that offense looked like what we think is the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Unbelievable. They also went through like a seven-game stretch this year where they barely broke 20. Okay? True. That offense with those players could not move. At all. And they won games because of their defense. In the in the AFC title game, they didn't score a point the entire second half. Yep, yep, you're right. So like, why are we just assuming this offense is unstoppable and the guy that's responsible for it has to get a job? I don't know. I don't know. Here, it, here's it becomes... where I'm at. Here's where I'm at on the enemy. Here's where I'm at on the enemy. Too many people are pushing this one person has to get a job too hard on me to make me think I don't want that person. Now, now I feel like now you're just trying to sell me something. Okay. He might be the second coming of Andy Reid, great head coach, all this stuff. I, now, because you're pushing him on me. Now I got to think you're up to something because that's, that's what it feels there's like. There's no reason why like other minorities are getting, getting hired now. And that's fine. That's good. We just had the last two get get hired as minorities, and that's great. Um, why are you so sold that this one person has to get it? Like the 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 one minority that I think has the best claim to being hired is is Caldwell. Like I like if I had a job open and and I needed to make a hire right now, like that guy doesn't have a job. He's he's currently unemployed right now, and that guy took the Lions to the playoffs. <laughs> That's all well, we, I need to Yeah, know. we talked about that. We talked about like how ridiculous so, so it was like, that but, he lost his job. For some reason, his name doesn't get brought up nearly as often as the enemy. Let's see. It's, I, it's like it's like there's a it's it's like for some reason we we solve all our racist problems in the NFL. Somebody would just give Eric Bieniemy a job, and I see. just don't think that's how any of this shit works. Uh, let's see. Caldwell was uh was hired by the XFL to a consulting panel that addressed football rules for the league back after he was uh, let go by the Lions. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Caldwell was on uh, Brian Flores' staff. Uh, he did interview to become the next head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was interviewed know. for the Bears. Um, and, I, was, and I'll tell you this, I'd hired, I'd hired him over every one of the guys that got hired for those jobs. All, all the coaches that got hired in this cycle, yeah, uh, so apparently Caldwell was in the – he was cited by Flores as an example. And that's not me trying example. to fix the race problem. Yeah. That's, I think he's a better coach than all of those other coaches. Yeah. I mean, l listen, this is what he did with Detroit. 2014, he went 11-5. 2015, 7-9. and nine. Then 2016 and 2017, he went 9-7. and seven. Like, he, he made it to the playoffs twice with the Lions. Yeah, but you win 11 games in Detroit. And look at what they did a decade before him and the decade after him. I mean, that is just crazy. I mean, it is, like that, that, that has to be the resume that you can say, I can do this. I'm capable of doing this. Uh, before, and no one can argue I can't. The year before Caldwell got there, they went 7-9 and nine in 2013. In 2012, they went 4-12. and 12. <laughs> it's just, it's bananas. It's absolutely I, I, bananas. So that that that's like I said, I get annoyed when when I hear the enemy say because now I just feel like you're trying to force something on me. Now, now you're just trying to sell me something, and now I feel like I'm being manipulated, and I don't like that feeling. I don't like that, and and it's not. I don't want to do it for the calls or anything. I I just I don't I don't like the way this is going. Yeah. If other yeah. minorities are getting jobs, that's a good thing. Eric Bieniemy, and he might be great, and it might be shitty reasons why he's not getting them. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not in these rooms. I don't know. I'm just telling you that I, I care about the problem as a whole, not as one guy. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, 
at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.